Well, I'm just going up to get some rain bales to put out. Let me just stop the tractor and I'll show you why I'm putting rain bales out. So, uh, as you probably realise, we've had the drought situation particularly bad down here in the uh, southwest. Well, um, I seem to be very unlucky looking at the rainfall that's going around. It just seems to keep missing the farm. And though we've had some, all it's done is green it up a little bit, but not very much. So, uh, so much so that the grass, although it's greened up, just hasn't really got going. And I'm running out of grass to feed. I literally have got them in fields, which I'd normally wouldn't even think of turning them out into. Um, you know, normally I expect a good bite of grass, six inches, not six inches, maybe four inches long for cows. I'm putting them in fields with two inches of grass. Uh, so we're gonna have to buffer feed. Um, but in the meantime, let's get out. I'll just show you what our home ground's like. There's, it's just no, nothing there. So this is what we call our home ground, where, where the cows sort of generally lounge around before they go off to other fields. Um, and I'll just sort of show you what the situation is now. So we've had some recovery of the grass. It's a bit green, but what we've got is big voids of still dead grass. Look at that. A bit of green coming back. There is there is a bit of green coming back, but what the problem is, we just haven't have had enough rain. Seriously, still haven't had enough rain. I'm looking at the forecast and it's just nothing coming really. Um, the, f the farm, I haven't got enough grass for the cows now really, for this size farm. Normally, you know, you balance your farm to fit the stock you got. I can honestly say, I haven't got enough grass on this farm for the stock we got now. Um, so the hence we're having to put some round bales out in the ring feeders up there. I'm going to go and get a couple of bales in a minute. Uh, but it is a worry, not just for me, but all the farmers around me. I'm speaking to other guys who are all seriously depleted. The neighbouring farms feeding full winter ration. Um, I know other people who are buying in pea straw to feed with molasses. Um, you know unheard of to be doing this it's sort of end of august i'd normally never feed anything till probably november uh, but the worry is as well look what i'm doing i'm feeding stuff that is meant for winter so we have got some being delivered in some some uh, silage i'm buying in coming in this week some bales but it's costing me a lot of money so um you know times times are a bit tight anyway with the cost of fuel and electric and everything like that good job the milk price has gone up so i've got to play it careful i'm not i'm not sure where we're going with that new mower whether after this winter whether we'll have the money to buy the new mower or not we'll wait and see um anyway we're going to go and get some round bales ideally i'd put three or four out but i need to ration it really i can't justify putting too many out otherwise we're really in trouble for the winter so i'm just putting a couple out well you know the milk supply the milk's down really the only thing is it is greening up a bit you know compared to what it was like a month ago when it was like sahara desert right let's all go and get let's go and get some round bales i've got a couple to get i've kept the cows in the yard um and we will have a look at the bales i think that's first cut bales we'll be putting out let's go and get them So I'd nip over here actually while I'm in this field. Just show you what I've got left to strip graze. Uh, and you'll see what I mean about it. There's just no bite in the field. It's, it's ridiculous. Right, I'm gonna get out here. Okay, so what we've got here then is electric fence dividing on the new lay between what we've fed and what we haven't. So look, so this has been strip grazed. They've been in here. And lo and behold, this is what I'm feeding them. Look at that, pathetic. Look at it. That's the bite for a cow. But look how dry, look how dry that soil is. And that's had some rain on it. 
See, the problem is I've had the rain on it, but it wasn't enough. And all it's done is it's greened it up, which is I'm grateful for. It's greened it up, but it hasn't done enough good to get the grass really going. The biggest worry we've got now is we're into um, sort of September, really. So what have I got? I've got two months probably till the cows come back in. Well, you know, how much grass is going to grow in September, October? Because we're, we're losing the heat in the evenings. The daylight in the evenings, the day's shortening. You know what it's like, it's getting dark at, at sort of by eight o'clock at night, um, or 8.30. So the grass hasn't got the time to grow in the same way as it had in the middle of summer. So I don't know how much of this is gonna come back and I, I blooming hope it does come back because I don't really wanna start opening the ciders clamp in October. We'll have nothing to feed in March. Hmm, hey ho. We're going to have a look at the pond a minute as well. I'll just show you what water there is left on the farm. Here we go, there's our stack of bales. Now the oldest bales I always put at the front to use first. So these will be first cut bales, which um, I think they're better off fed to the cow, dairy cows because they'll be better quality. So I wonder if I can get, get one of those without actually getting out. You know, just a job, look at that. I might have to uh, take the wire down. These bales here are first cut silage actually. They were made in this very field when we were doing first cut and I had some grass, I thought. Do you remember I said I've got a hell of a crop of grass? Oh, do you know what? That's bit me on the bum, isn't it? I haven't got a hell of a crop of grass for a third cut. Bugger all grass. I got bugger all grass. Um, better not get your kids going around saying that. Um, but because it's first cut, the quality of these bells will be really good. So I'm best feeding those to the cows. The quality of the grass the other side, there's some bales there that are, uh, from last year. I'm better off saving those for um, dry cows or something really, second quality really. Still be fine, I've had a few open, they're really good actually. But um, ideally you want the best quality for cows because you're getting milk out of them. You know, it's not just... Uh, maintaining the cow you're hoping to get a few litres of milk out of them even on what they're getting So let's have a look what we got here then. Uh, I'm a bit intrigued to look at these bales actually because I haven't opened. Just get my pen knife out of my pocket. 
I haven't opened the first cut one yet this year. Right, let's have a look. Can you see that? Pen nice sent to me from Australia. Very good actually. It's got this cut so easy. Nice looking bale. You can tell by the colour of it, it's got a nice golden brown colour. A little bit of mould just on the surface there, that's nothing to worry about. See, on the first year you usually get a little bit of mould. If these bales start being left sort of a couple of years, what happens is the mould starts sort of penetrating a bit further. But saying that, those bales over there, which are over a year old now, they still look pretty ripe, pretty good. I got it, let's go and so that's that one de-wrapped. Gotta be careful with this, you don't cut the net. It, if you go in too deep on the black plastic with that, you'll take out the net and then when you lift up the loader, the flipping bale falls apart. I've done that before. So, always all right on the bit. Always on the bit. Uh, around the front's okay, but on the top, you've got to be gentle. And do you remember when I did the bail off challenge? The problem with that afterwards was cleaning it up because when I was doing the bail off challenge, which was, what was that, a couple of years ago? It was all about speed, so you were going <laughs> and uh, cutting the net underneath as well as the uh, as well as the black, and then of course when you went to move the bales, they all blooming fell apart. Right, that's all right. Another nice bale. Another nice bale. Right, let's put this knife away. Okay, so I'm just going to stick these two out. I, I deliberately put them up in this corner. It's where we had the soil left over from the Lagoon of Doom. Uh, we, we've cleared most of it now. <coughs> And so there's no, there's no grass here to destroy because the last thing I want to do is put it over on whatever grass I have got, put the ring feeders out and then they'll, the cattle will destroy that. Um, we, they just will trample it around the ring feeders. Right, I'm going to stick these bales out then.
Right, I just got to pick the wrappers up. Always keep an eye on your wrappers, no good lying, leaving those lying around the farm. Not very nice when you see farms with plastic floating around in the fields and stuff. Always, always try and have a policy on this farm that we, we try and keep the place tidy and try and dispose of the rubbish as it goes. Now we have to pay for recycling on the plastic, um, but anything else we try and like to take down the tip or whatever. But uh, it is a job keeping on top of things. I look at our workshop and I think, God, I was in there the other day, I just really want to get in there and spend a couple of days sorting it. But I really don't know when that's going to happen. So even doing this, it's, by the time I've messed around with this, it's half an hour gone. Right, I'll tell you what we'll do, just before I take this back and then I'll let the cows out on this, we're going to have a look at the pond, because I'll show you what the water's like in there. Right, I'm just going over to one of the field ponds we've got on the farm. I think we've got uh, five, six field ponds on the farm, of which two have got water in them now. One's got water over there because it, it takes all the roof water off some of the buildings, so gets topped up, even with a little bit of rain we've had. This one, though, is the only one naturally fed that never, ever dries out. And basically what it is, we're on a spring line from that hill behind me, and there's a spring line along this here, and all the ponds, there are ponds all along here, or were. This one though is pretty dry, look. There is a bit left at the back, back there. I mean, the water normally comes to here in the spring, you can see the frog spawn. Um, let's get over. So it's lined with stone, so in the olden days for water troughs, the cattle could walk down into it and you can imagine in a drought situation what a problem that would be trying to keep cattle fed waters if you didn't have tap water and mains water like we got. So there is a bit of rain, natural water in the back. I've never seen this pond completely empty. I think when we, actually when we dug it out, we might have been some water, no water in it then because it was silted up. That was 10 years ago. Um, I mean this, Someone said to me, why don't you irrigate your fields with some water from the river or something? But there is no river on this farm. There's a stream down there, uh, completely dry since June. All the lower fields ponds are dry. This one's left and the one I said over there. Now, thank God this is here for wildlife. Because what does wildlife have to drink from, apart from water troughs, in a drought? And this is all there is. I can think down there for miles, there is no actual water for wildlife. So I can see, you can see it's quite churned up here. Something's been coming and getting water. So you do need, you know, you don't think about the wildlife and the drought, but it really struggles because all the ponds dry up. And I imagine if you sneak down here and put a wildlife camera up, you'd probably catch quite a few different things coming in here just have a drink, right? It's a bit like a watering hole in, this, uh, in, out in um, Africa, isn't it? They have all the wildlife there coming, like zebras and stuff. Not many zebras in Titherington. But <laughs> anyway, <coughs> right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back now with the tractor and just uh, let the cows out here. Do not despair. I am still here, health-wise I'm still here. And we're still here. We'll be farming here. I'm not giving up because of a bit of drought. I'm not giving up because of health. I'm not giving up, basically. You know, I think this is the thing about farming, and any of you farmers will know, you, you live with setbacks all the time, and it's part of the nature of farming. You just, you just are resilient to different things. You find a way. So we will find a way through this drought situation. Um, and through next winter, like everyone else does. You know, and... Most of the implications are probably cost, really, rather than practicality of not being able to deal with it. It's how much you can spend. Look at, look, look at this. Look. Look. And you see, there you go. That's a classic example of how dry it is uh, and why I'm not getting the grass growth. Despite the rain I've had, that's still dusty as beep. 
right, let's take this back. I'll tell you one thing, I... Let's start her up, a bit noisy in here. One thing, let's shut the windows a minute. That makes it a bit quiet. I almost guarantee when it starts raining, it just won't stop raining because the one thing you do notice is what happens is generally speaking, nature averages out. So if you've got a lack of rain one year, we have plenty the next year. So, uh, and I, the interesting thing is, I don't know if I can find these to put on the end of this video. Uh, about 10 years ago, we, we had a summer that was so wet that there are, I had round bales in a field where the water was up to the round bales halfway up them in the middle of about July. So I'll, I'll see if I can dig those out. I'm not sure where they are on computer somewhere. But uh, it kind of shows you the extremes of weather. One way or the other, you get too much sun, too much rain, blah, blah, blah. You know, whether you think of climate change or not, humans have been dealing with extremes of weather for centuries, not just in the last 50 years, I'm sure of that. Right, we're gonna crack on. I'm gonna let the cows out now. We'll, We'll let them out and we'll have a quick look at them munching on those bales. Come on. Come on. Kept them shut in so they wouldn't come out while I was putting the bales out. They'll be along there for sure. Pretty keen, look. We're gonna have a look at them in a minute, munching those bales. There we go then, it didn't take long for them to latch on. They're in a lot of space there. There's one just coming in. Surprised how many you can get round though. There's gotta be about a dozen round each one, isn't there? They're really going for it though, aren't they? Look at them. They're, this is best quality, first quality as they would say. So. They really love this stuff. In some ways that's a problem because they like it too much. Just taking some photos. Look at munching on that. Can I just come through ladies? Oh. What do you think of this stuff? Uh, worrying about the spillage. You loving it, aren't you? Blimey. Why don't you eat it down there instead of, look, what they've done, they've gone and put the heads up over the top of it. Why don't you just eat it from the side like normal people? You've got your head right in, haven't you? And you're a munching though, wow. You are a pig. You are a pig. You're all pigs. Quite incredible to watch actually isn't it? Where are you? That is some hungry cows and this is the problem they're not having enough food really in the fields. Look at that. Look at you eating. Oh my goodness. Right. Anything to say? Do you want to speak with your mouth full? Let's just have a look out the way. You can see how hungry they are, That's, I, you know. Really, I should put about another couple of bales out here, really, but I can't justify that at the moment. Not until I've really secured where we're going with the winter feed. They're on that as well. Look at that. I, the only thing is interesting, I put two bales out yesterday thinking, well when I first put them out, 
I thought they would actually demolish them all within about an hour. And I came back out here at six o'clock in the morning and they just about finished them there and there was still a little bit left. So they won't, they won't all, all, those ones there won't finish these bales and there will be some left for the others. So um, less is more maybe. If I put three, four bales out, they might waste it. Um, I think three ring feeders would be better though. Right, cracking on, cracking on slowly. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm still thinking about doing a calendar for this year. Um, I haven't done one. I did one last year, went pretty well. Uh, so if anyone's interested in a calendar, just, just put a comment below. I'd be interested to know what the thoughts on that are. You know, it's a way of supporting the farm, really. I don't, I don't like asking for money, so uh, I like to earn money. So um, if someone wants to support us or me, uh, if I sell you a calendar, that, I feel good about that because like, you've got something for your money. Um, I'll be looking into doing that probably coming out at the beginning of October. I haven't designed it yet. I've got some pictures. Right, crack on. <laughs>